Good evening and welcome to Hard Fire. My name is Ronald Ramo and I will be your host for this evening's programming. Tonight's topic of discussion, the mayor's proposal to regulate the ownership and possession of air quality testing devices. Tonight's guest, Councilman John Liu of the New York City Council, head of the Transportation Committee and a member of the New York City Council Public Safety Committee. Councilman, welcome to Hard Fire and thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Let's get right down to the discussion. From your firsthand experience in the New York City pub in the public, public Safety Committee, could you please give some details into the mayor's proposal? Sure, I, I can give some level of detail. It's a proposal that has been put forth by the Bloomberg administration mm -hmm. and the New York City Police Department that would, in the interests of protecting the public, especially after, in this uh, post-September 11th mm -hmm. era, uh, to require anybody who would have atmosphere detectors mm -hmm. to register them with the police department and actually to get a permit for them. And that would, that would uh, include any kind of commercial entity, any kind of private entity, including nonprofit organizations. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I, I think the intent is to get at those who would be looking to do more than simply test the quality of our air. Mm -hmm. it's, um, we had a hearing about it in the City Council mm -hmm. un under the leadership of Chairperson Vallone, the mm -hmm. Peter Vallone, the head of the Public Safety Committee. Uh, I'm actually not a member of the committee, oh. but I was very interested in the topic and so I sat in on that committee. I see. Um, well, the question I have is, it would appear why is it, did there, were there any explanation why the, the mayor wants to give the New York City Police Department as opposed to the Fire Department, the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, or even the Office of Emergency Management authority to regulate uh, these devices? From what I gathered in the testimony by the NYPD, the, the proposal was to put the control under the Police Department because they, they, the, the thrust behind this, this proposal from the administration was that it was a public safety matter I and see. that it was an area that required uh, uh, monitoring by the police department. I see. Considering uh, that the proposal, uh, according to the New York Times, the proposal was uh, first uh, introduced to the mayor um, by the United States uh, Department of Homeland Security. Uh, should the New York City Council entertain the proposal with more skepticism, considering that almost on a yearly basis, the Department of Homeland Security seems to slash the counterterrorism budget for New York City? Well, that, that's a very good point. Uh, we, we definitely need more of the Homeland Security resources here in New York City. Mm -hmm. As I think we all can agree that New York is on the front lines of this war against terrorism. We are, we've been target many times over mm -hmm. and it's it we should be vigilant and we should be concerned for public safety and that's why I think it makes sense that Homeland Security would work in conjunction with the New York City Police Department to do what they need to do to to keep people safe mm -hmm. now my concern my reservation about the Bloomberg administration's proposal is that the the proposal is not much of a proposal. It basically says anybody whatsoever who would like to test the quality of air in New York City mm -hmm. must first apply for a permit mm -hmm. from the New York City Police Department. Now, I would totally agree that if, if a company was looking to do it for profit, they should apply. Mm -hmm. If uh, an organization that had uh, certain kinds of uh, profit-making purposes, they should apply. Mm -hmm. But to extend it to uh, all universities mm -hmm. who may have very legitimate research purposes to mm -hmm. test the quality of air, mm -hmm. to organizations, uh, community-based organizations such as asthma-free school zones mm -hmm. that are looking to actually uh, monitor and serve as a watchdog over what government is doing right, with regard to how we're protecting air quality. Mm -hmm. Why should universities and these community-based organizations have to apply for a permit to test the air? Mm -hmm. And 
even the the police official who testified at the hearing mm -hmm. agreed that the intent of the legislation was not to get after universities that have legitimate research purposes mm -hmm. and get after community-based organizations that mm -hmm. have a very real interest and ability to serve as watchdogs for what we in government do. Right. So my question simply was, well, why don't you give us a proposal then that narrows the scope of what we're trying to accomplish here, which is to protect people from possible hazards. Yes. As opposed to write a proposal that is so overly broad that you'd capture all these universities, you'd capture all these community-based organizations that are completely benign and, in fact, should be afforded the opportunity to test air quality without interference of municipal government. Well, Sagan, so I, my uh, understanding is that if the proposal by the mayor was more narrowly tailored, you would be uh, more supportive. I would, sure. I, Again, I, I don't think for a second that that we should relax our guard in any way. Mm -hmm. I believe that, uh, especially after what we have gone through and what we continue to see in major cities across the world, mm -hmm. we have to do what we can to keep people safe. But there is always a line to be drawn between um, public safety mm -hmm. and the need for government to be on top of things and private liberty, yes, which is what our whole country is based upon. And ever since September 11th, there has been this tug of war between the two. Mm -hmm. I just think that this is one of those cases that unnecessarily intrudes into the uh, private liberty aspect. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I, I don't begrudge the NYPD and Homeland Security for wanting to put this kind of proposal together. My caution to them was, let's, let's fashion a, a proposal that actually makes sense instead of something that's overly broad that, that then needs to be modified at a later stage. Well said. My next question is, if one, if one considers that um, after 9-11, it was private individuals with air quality detection devices that were able to expose the uh, misrepresentations by the EPA regarding the air quality of Ground Zero, uh, should people be concerned that this is an effort by the mayor to silence uh, environmental criticism and other efforts to verify statements made by government relating to air quality? I don't believe that that was the intent behind mm -hmm. the Bloomberg administration putting this proposal out there. Mm -hmm. But the, the fact is that it could lead to exactly that result. I see. That... Uh, Private organizations, community organizations would no longer have free reign to monitor what government actually was doing. Okay. And it, if, if it's, we never know what the next administration, in, in 21 months, the next administration will take over. Mm -hmm. And who knows the, the kinds of thinking or modus operandi that new administration may, may be operating under. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it has nothing to do with the intent. My reservations have nothing to do with the intent of this mayor. Mm -hmm. It's just as a matter of public policy, when we consider this kind of proposal, that will necessarily strike a balance between uh, uh, public safety and private liberty. Mm -hmm. I, I think we need, to, we need to take a more careful approach and not, not uh, have government expect uh, uh, overly broad powers. Next question. During the hearing, did the, uh, I believe, it, was it uh, Deputy Commissioner Falkenrath who spoke before the committee? Yes, that, that was. Did Deputy uh, Commissioner Falkenrath bring uh, any event that occurred in the past that would highlight the need to regulate uh, these devices? Uh, yes, Mr. Falkenrath did cite a couple of examples where uh, they found uh, what they consider uh, wrongdoing or, or foul play with regard to these uh, air quality detection devices. And so that's why I, my, my point never was to object to any need mm -hmm. for regulating these devices. Mm -hmm. My objection simply was that uh, the proposal he was asking us to, to approve legislatively uh, went far beyond what he actually needed to keep people safe. I see. I see. Yeah.
Um, are there any other efforts to establish uh, a counterproposal to the mayor's uh, idea within the council? Well, it's been several months, mm -hmm. and uh, we we I think we very clearly asked him to go back mm -hmm. and to refine the proposal a little mm -hmm. bit so that we can give it the careful legislative attention and uh, when when necessitated uh, approval I see so that the city government can proceed with the the regulation of these devices mm -hmm. well, I would like to perhaps move on to another subject uh, and got all night <laughs> oh hardly um, but nevertheless, uh, moving on to education. Uh, on a March uh, 4th, uh, 2008, the New York City Council Education Committee held hearings to extend the mayor's control of the education system. There seem to be many objections and concerns. Could you please summarize some of your, your own uh, concerns with the mayoral control of our public education? Sure. Well, the, the hearing earlier in March was a, a hearing convened by Chairperson Robert Jackson of the Education Committee, uh, which I serve on. Okay. And... Uh, the purpose of the hearing was to examine what mayoral control has brought us or, or has wrought <laughs> in the last five years. And this is in anticipation of the expiration of mayoral control as we now know it today, mm -hmm. um, next year in 2009, Yes, and whether or not it should be renewed yes. at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, I supported giving the mayor control, which meant abolishing the old Board of Education mm -hmm. and uh, creating the position of chancellor that would be directly appointed by the mayor. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I thought we, we, it was obvious we needed some change in schools. And mm -hmm. what I thought mostly was that we needed accountability. I see. Accountability, and Mayor Bloomberg was ready, willing, and able to mm -hmm. step up and, and provide that accountability. And so I, as well as my colleagues in the city council and the state legislature, I gave him the, the mayoral control. Mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the intervening years, however, I, I have uh, had some reservations about mm -hmm. how the current system works, and if, in fact, we are to reauthorize mayoral control next year, uh, there should be some changes. And some of these changes would include uh, making sure that the Department of Education truly functions as a city agency, much like the police department, mm -hmm. the Department of Transportation, mm -hmm. the Department of Finance, mm -hmm. uh, Department of Sanitation. It should be an agency charged with responsibility, in this case, education, educating our kids, mm -hmm. but answerable to legislative oversight. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the way the current system of mail control uh, totally bypasses what our founding fathers had envisioned, which was a, ch a system of checks and balances. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, there is just so little check and balance that the chancellor and the Department of Education essentially mandates these policies, and uh, there is uh, there's no check on what they can do. And... Uh, it goes from the more, or I should say, the, the less serious, such as the outright ban on cell phone use in schools, mm -hmm. to what I consider much more serious matters, the, uh, the, uh, this overemphasis on, on testing, mm -hmm. high-stakes testing, where kids are tested once a year, and it's not only used to track their progress, it's it's used to determine whether entire schools should remain open or should be closed down. It's, uh, it's used to determine bonuses for educators. It's, it's used for too many purposes. And, and the problem with that is, you know, I, I recognize that testing is necessary. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you make so many things dependent on these test results, right. it's inevitable that education devolves into teaching for the test or Understood. coaching for the test. Mm -hmm. That's not what true educational achievement is about. Mm -hmm. And so that, so bringing back a system of checks and balances, that, that is definitely what we need uh, to, to make sure that the Department of Education can do an even better job of educating our kids. What would uh, you say to any criticism uh, that the concerns 
uh, raised by the council are nothing more than hard negotiations with the mayor to gain more power in the the education gain more gain more influence over the education uh, control of the education of New York City well people could always make that criticism this is this is a a legislative body mm -hmm. I guess in some ways butting up against the executive body. Mm -hmm. And that is precisely what our founding fathers envisioned, mm -hmm. a system of checks and balances. Mm -hmm. uh, not trying to take power away as much as making sure that there is the ability to conduct legislative oversight. When, when we have oversight hearings as a legislative body and time and time again, the executive, in, in this case the chancellor and the Department of Education, fail to even provide us with rudimentary answers to questions mm -hmm. we provide with them in, provide to them in advance weeks weeks in advance mm. that is the executive body uh, in some ways thumbing their nose at the at the legislative and that is that's there's something wrong with that system mm -hmm. and when we talk about uh, returning to a system where there is legislative oversight that's for the next council and for the next mayor and the next chancellor. Mm -hmm. It has little to do with the people who are in our respective positions today. Mm -hmm. Because in a couple of years, for the most part, there will be different people in these positions. Mm -hmm. But the theory still holds that these last five years, we have not seen great results under mm -hmm. a system of mayoral control without legislative oversight. And going forward, if we are to extend mayoral control, there really should be a, a true system of checks and balances. Well said. Considering that uh, one of the major objections in the New York Times article refle uh, reflecting on that uh, the Education Committee's hearings, uh, that there was not enough parental participation in the education system, would it be a good idea, or perhaps... Um, would it be a good idea to de to engage in more decentralization of the education the education planning uh, in a district by district or community by community uh, air level? A absolutely, there there absolutely needs to be more ability, not just opportunity but ability, for parents mm -hmm. to provide input into how the education of their kids is conducted. Mm -hmm. How much reliance on these test results? Mm -hmm. um, should there be more after-school programs, or can they be done away with? Uh, when can we expect kids to eat lunch? Is it okay for them to eat lunch at 9.30 in the morning? Parental input is, uh, is absolutely critical. Mm -hmm. And that should be a part of the process. And in fact, I, every one of my colleagues in the legislative body would agree and would support more parental input mm -hmm. into how schools are operated. But, but, but parental input is, is not a check and balance on the executive. The, we're talking about branches of government, branches of government f consisting of individuals that ultimately are answerable to the electorate. So that is where the true system of checks and balances occurs. But nonetheless, we would definitely need to have more parental input to make the schools even better. Well, um, that's an interesting point to make. Um, on the other hand, though, one could also argue that as much as checks and balances were a part of our, our founding, our founders' ideology was also the idea of decentralization, the idea that uh, if you give the people in the middle less control over certain aspects and more of it devolves to uh, more local bodies, the local bodies themselves can keep checking and balancing each other with a vote of feet, so to speak. Uh, so um, to that extent, even uh, let's say there is a change and there's more uh, council oversight, would it be a good idea for the council to devolve more authority to the districts and to the local, more localized school district boards as opposed to one centralized board? Well, that, that to me is not the a question of checks and balances. Mm -hmm. That is more a question of should there be uh, uniform standards across an entire city system that has more than 1.2 million kids in it at any given time? Or should there be a system that's flexible enough 
to understand that schools in different neighborhoods actually face different challenges. Mm -hmm. and, and so that, that has been a question that, <laughs> as a city, we've come back and forth uh, over the decades mm -hmm. uh, several times already. Mm -hmm. Centralization, decentralization, recentralization, re-decentralization. Mm -hmm. uh, we go back and forth on that. That, that to me, is not as much of a, a question of checks and balances. I, I do believe that there needs to be a, a very strong set of uh, uniform standards laid mm -hmm. out across the board. And I will give credit to Chancellor Klein and the Department of Education for enacting uh, a, a high degree of uniformity across the city. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with uniformity. Mm -hmm. the, the problem is that some things shouldn't be as uniform mm -hmm. and some things should never have been the norm in the first place. Okay. But there is, uh, because of the absence of checks and balances, mm -hmm. the uh, the department and the chancellor are able to have free reign over any anything that happens in the schools. I see, and that's that doesn't necessarily provide for the best result. Uh, that's a, that's a very well made point. I, I'd just like to go to the committee that you head yourself, the transportation committee. And uh, just ask a few minor questions. The first and foremost, well, I, I hope you can. I'm, I'm sure they're major. <laughs> well, never hurts to be a little humble. Uh, relating to the the mayor's plan for congestion pricing, how is that progressing through the city council, if at all? Well, we just held hearings about that in March. Mm -hmm. um, we started at 10 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and I left at 8 o'clock to come to do this show. <laughs> and after we finish the show, I've got to go back to City Hall. So we have had hundreds, literally hundreds of people testifying, uh, uh, mostly in favor, a few against, the, the mayor's congestion pricing proposal. Mm -hmm. I, I support it, mm -hmm. uh, even though I get a lot of flack for supporting it. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's never easy to ask people to pay money, and in this case, we are asking people to pay money to drive into Manhattan during the busiest hours of the weekday. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe that uh, we we need to reduce traffic congestion. Mm -hmm. It's costing us thirteen billion dollars a year in economic activity. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're hemorrhaging fifty thousand jobs a year, and that's not just in Manhattan. It's it's throughout our city. Mm -hmm. And if we don't address it in the immediate term, we're going to pay for it in the long run. Economically, and, and that's not even mentioning the environmental costs. And so in, in order to reduce traffic congestion, there needs to be a carrot and, and a stick. The carrot is the improved mass transit that will be implemented uh, according to federal requirements before any congestion pricing takes place or is implemented. Mm -hmm. And the the Im improved and the new and improved transit includes brand new bus lines, local buses as well as express bus service taking people to Manhattan. Mm -hmm. That uh, routes that don't exist today, and and other transit improvements including increased frequency of existing bus routes, uh, and and the stick is obviously the charge. The charge that even after all these choices are laid out for people, if they still insist on driving, uh, then, then we're going to ask them to pay, the, pay this fee. Um, other than bus alternatives, is the council or the federal funding uh, giving money to especially places like Eastern Queens to improve rapid transit or even connections to the Long Island Railroad? Absolutely, and that's, that's exactly what we... What what I talked about early on, I said this is a proposal that people are going to hate. Why? Because people don't have any confidence that the city or especially the MTA will use the money properly. Mm -hmm. And so, so uh, I insisted that we spell out exactly where the new routes would run mm -hmm. in terms of express buses, mm -hmm. where we can get new ferries, and ferries will be implemented in the Rockaways and Southern Brooklyn, as well as other parts of the city, bring people to Manhattan, and expanded expanded access to both the Long Island Railroad mm -hmm. and Metro North. Metro North, that hill's been conquered. Uh, there is going to be expanded frequency of local spot stops in the Bronx. 
Long Island Railroad, we still have more work to do with regard to increasing the stops in Brooklyn and in Queens. Mm -hmm. uh, according to an article from the New York Times of January 12, 2007, approximately 35 percent of all government workers commute into the city by automobile. Uh, main, their main uh, reason for doing so was they received uh, parking placards. Have there been any discussion on reducing the number of placards issued uh, by the city? Mayor Bloomberg has pledged that he will continue to reduce the number of parking placards. And I believe there, there has been a, uh, a crackdown since there's mm -hmm. been some grumbling about it. Understood. Yeah. Uh, and just, I think, let me just see. I think I have one last question. I seem to have misplaced. Ah, yes. Well, uh, has the New York City Council done it? Has the New York City Council entertained any proposals uh, regarding the Long Island Railroad right of way, uh, the old uh, Rockaway Beach uh, Long Island Railroad right of way uh, that goes up uh, 101st Avenue in uh, Lower Queens? Uh, we haven't considered that specifically in mm -hmm. the City Council. There are different lines that have been discontinued decades ago, the mm -hmm. Rockaway line being one of them. I know that the MTA looks at it periodically, but up until this point, it's not something that's been considered for a full resurrection. Perhaps this congestion pricing may lead to its revival. That's always a possibility. All right, then. I believe we are out of time. I'd like to thank all of our guests. I'd like to thank our guest, uh, Councilman John Liu, for attending. I'd thank like to you. thank the viewers for tuning in. And until we meet again... Have a free day. Hardfire is funded in part by the Libertarian Party of New York, www.ny.lp.org. Catering for the cast and crew of Hardfire is generously provided by Divine Taste, 150 7th Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11215, 718-369-9548.